Hello, I'm Ryo Ishibashi. I'm the second year master student. I belong to the Department of Physics at Chu University. Today, I'd like to introduce the research of my supervisor, Professor Taguchi, on his behalf. This is the title. First, I will touch on our claims. In short, although our method uses only fully unsupervised learning, it can be applied to a variety of data and outperforms existing method. This presentation has already been preprinted. You can access it here and this slide available via this QR code. Please check it. Uh, this is uh, the outline of my presentation. Uh, for a detailed explanation, please refer to three preprints or this Springer book. First, background. Large P, small n problem. In general, genomic data is huge, while samples such as patient and cell are very small and difficult to analyze. So we propose a tensor decomposition method that can be applied to various types of experimental data. Next, why do we choose PCA and tensor decomposition? These are the reasons we choose PCA and TD. The first is the ability to handle a variety of data. Second, interpretation is easy. Third, it is easy to program and computationally inexpensive because both PCA and tensor decomposition are unsupervised learning. Next, what is a tensor decomposition? Higher order singular value decomposition, as the name implies, is an extension of singular value decomposition to multiple dimensions. Next, this is how to interpret a tensor decomposition. For example, if we consider the third order tensor of zine sample and tissue, UL1i is a zine dependent vector, UL2j is sample dependent vector, UL3k is a tissue dependent vector. We want to find DEGs, differentially expressed gene, that differ between a patient and the control and uh, a tissue specific. So we, we first find the sample dependent vector UL2J such that there is a difference between patient and control. Then we find UL3K which has differences between a tissue like this. Next, uh, finally, we can identify the DEG by finding the L1 that maximizes the quatensor max Z from the identify L2 and L3. Be this is because the larger the value of the quatensor, the larger the contribution to original tensor. Finally, analysis procedure. After principal component analysis and the tensor decomposition, we select the sample vector and tissue vector that have the desired properties. The zine vector is then determined. Here, uh, for the selection criteria, we assume that U follows the Gaussian distribution and we assign a, a p-value to zine U in the uh, cumulative chi-square distribution. When following Gaussian distribution perfectly, uh, this histogram is flat expect around 1 minus p equals 1. However, in many cases, it is not and is disordered. The standard deviation was then optimized by excluding outliers to follow a Gaussian distribution. Uh, I will explain in detail later. Next results. Benchmark data set. MAQC is frequently used for benchmark studies. We analyzed RNSSEC XIJ represents expression of i-th zine at j-th sample. A sample, sample are seven universal human reference RNA and a seven human brain. The MAQC data looks like this. The density distribution showed that uh, some uh, some zines are common, but uh, 
some are different uh, among the samples. We applied a principal component analysis to the data and looked at the sample-dependent vectors uh, V1 and V2. V1 is the mean vector with no differences among the samples, and uh, V2 is a vector with uh, differences among the sample, like this. Then we assign a p-value to U2. On the left is uh, a 1 minus p histogram, and on the right is a 1 minus p uh, histogram uh, with uh, standard deviation optimized to follow Gaussian distribution as much as possible. After optimization, the histograms are closer to Gaussian distribution. Uh, this means that outliers uh, can be successfully uh, considered outliers. So the selected zine were uploaded to Enricher for enrichment analysis. As we can see in the figure, the zine selected by our method are better than those by existing methods. Finally, our method outperforms various state-of-the-art method. Next, DNA maturation and histone modification. Our method also outperformed the existing method for DNA methylation and histone modification data. If you are interested, you can access more details here. Finally, conclusion. Although our method uses only fully unsupervised learning, it can be applied to variety of data and outperforms existing method. Thank you.